I'm João Pedro Ferreira. Uh, I work in the hospital, uh, University Hospital of Nancy and Clinical Research Center. And I'm going to present an analysis from the OMASH trial, which is an acronym for the Heart Omics in Aging trial. And the, uh, today we are talking about the mechanistic insight into the effects of spironolactone for preventing heart failure proteomics and knowledge-based net, knowledge network analysis from the OMAGE trial. This is, um, so as a disclosure, this, this, the OMAGE project was funded uh, by the European Union uh, with, a, with a grant from the program FP7. The OMAGE trial uh, was designed to answer the question if the spironolactone would reduce fibrosis markers in certain patients at risk for developing heart failure. And this uh, patient's risk would be identified by the levels of circulating galactin-3. So the primary outcome of the homage trial was an interaction or, or, or to assess an effect modification between the effect of spironolactone and the levels of galactin-3 to reduce a, a circulating biomarker of collagen synthesis that is called P3 and P, P3 and P. So, but in, in, in the trial or the analysis that I presented at the HFA, as I said, we assessed uh, the effect of spironolactone in um, 276 circulating proteins uh, from uh, three O-link uh, panels, so cardiovascular two, cardiovascular three, and inflammation panels. So this was a much wider evaluation of the effect of spironolactone in circulating biomarkers. This uh, trial is, is a probe trial. It's an open label trial in which we uh, randomized uh, five uh, 127 participants to receive a uh, spironolactone 25 to 50 milligrams a day or usual care. Uh, 265 people were randomized to spironolactone and 262 to usual care. The mean age was 73 years and 23, 26% uh, were female. The inclusion criteria uh, um, were age above 60. Patients had to have clinical risk factors of coronary artery disease or uh, other risk fa factors such as diabetes, hypertension, microalbuminuria, or abnormalities in ECG. They also had to have uh, a certain biological risk determined by the levels of anti NP that would have to be between 125 and 1,000 for nt p and 35 and 280 uh, picograms per milliliter for BNP. Because this is a prevention trial, patients could not have heart failure signs or heart failure symptoms. So the uh, results for uh, the main results from the analysis that I presented and uh, that was that spironolactone and, th and these results were mostly confirmatory because we already uh, had, uh, uh, we already knew from the previous analysis that uh, spironolactone could reduce collagen uh, synthesis markers. So spironolactone reduced, and this is confirmed by another technique. So to go into details in the first uh, European Heart Journal paper, we have shown that uh, spironolactone could reduce collagen type 1 uh, in, with a technique that was measured by ELISA. And here we have shown the same thing that uh, spironolactone could reduce collagen type 1 as determined by the O-link markers. So this is very consistent using different techniques and is very reassuring uh, uh, of the effects of spironolactone. We also found that spironolactone could reduce matrix metalloproteinase 2, which is a molecule that reflects the, um, the beneficial effects. Spironolactone reduces the level of BNP, which is a marker 
uh, that reflects the stretch of the heart and is the strongest prognostic marker in heart failure. So by reducing this biomarker, uh, re this reflects the positive effect of spinal tone in the heart and probably uh, uh, points towards a, ben a beneficial effect that can have uh, clinical implications as well. Uh, so we, we found other effects that are more broad. One that is important to highlight is that the spironolactone increased the levels of renin, and this is expected because spironolactone is a, is a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist. So by blocking the mineralocorticoid receptor, it will increase as a feedback mechanism. It will increase the levels of aldosterone and the levels of renin. But this has no clinical implications because it's just a response for, uh, for the action of the drug. It actually means that the drug is being taken and is having its effects. Then we found other effects that have been only described mostly in animal models, and they have to do with metabolism um, and also uh, inflammation and probably also uh, mechanisms linked to um, the, the uh, adipokines or the, the fat, the formation of white adipose tissue. Also, uh, and lastly, we found that uh, some of the biomarkers linked to um, vascular function and endothelial function were also improved by spironolactone. Basically, we can uh, cluster or group together the effect of spironolactone in this population uh, around six major effects. So it's the effect in the renin angiotensin aldosterone system pathway, the effect on hemostasis and proteolysis, the effect on adipose tissue, adipokines, the effect on collagen and extracellular matrix, the effect on adhesion molecules and an anti-inflammatory effect. So these are the basic or core, the core mechanist, uh, mechanisms of the action of, of spironolactone. And these were the insights that we gained uh, from this study is that many of these uh, mechanisms that are more linked to hemostasis, adipokines, uh, adhesion molecules, inflammation, and even extracellular matrix and fibrosis had been mostly documented in uh, preclinical pre studies and not in humans. So this uh, is really a, a, a translation to the clinic of findings that have only been found in animal models. So these findings can only be uh, applicable to people with the criteria that uh, we used for inclusion. And this is a very broad population because basically it's uh, patients that have high cardiovascular risk. And, and these patients can, have, can be patients with diabetes, patients with hypertension, patients who had, had a myocardial infarction or uh, a coronary artery uh, bypass grafting or angioplasty. And, and the particularity here is that we also increase the biological risk. So we uh, had for inclusion, a certain threshold, very low, but certain threshold of natriuretic peptide levels, which means that these patients already had some cardiac involvement, some, some uh, the structure of the heart could be altered. And so the, this population has a certain uh, cardiovascular risk uh, above the general population. Also, this trial is, it was small, only 527 participants, and was not designed for morbidity or mortality outcomes. It's a mechanistic trial. So before we apply these findings to clinical practice, we would need a bigger trial to test if this drug could uh, improve outcomes in this population. Um, still, these findings really point to a beneficial effect of the drug in certain uh, patients. And, we, and this drug is already used uh, since a long time to treat certain types of 
uh, certain types of patients like this. For example, patients with resistant hypertension that benefit from spironolactone. Many patients with heart failure and preserved ejection fracture who have symptoms, they also benefit from the drug. So already some patients with similar characteristics to, to those included in this trial can benefit from treatment, but to apply to a broader population, we would need a, a bigger trial and designed for out hard outcomes, let's say. From these findings, we uh, can conclude that uh, spironolactone has a pleiotropic mode of action. And th this includes the reduction of biomarkers associated with fibrosis, congestion, inflammation, and vascular function. We also found additional metabolic effects. Uh, this, as, and as, as I said before, confirms for the first time results that had, had been only observed in experimental models and also uh, highlights the, 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 the usefulness or the utility of uh, proteomic analysis for better understanding the pathophysiology uh, and the, the pharmacological effect in clinical investigation. So the next steps would be, uh, and also as I, I, I pointed out before, would be to scale up uh, to a bigger trial and to assess if this drug could improve uh, patients' outcomes. Uh, for example, hospitalizations, uh, uh, mortality, but also uh, quality of life uh, and uh, probably uh, tolerance to effort. Although, however, these trials uh, are substantially uh, expensive and would require uh, a, a certain budget to be conducted. And uh, spironolactone is, is, a, is a drug that is uh, 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 almost uh, sold uh, for free in the market. And so uh, this would, would, I think here, the funding to scale up is also a challenge. But I would say uh, that the next step would go for um, a trial assessing morbidity and mortality in such a population.